Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we'll discuss common rechargeable battery chemistries such as nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, lithium polymer, lithium iron, lithium iron phosphate, and phthalate acid batteries. We'll focus on their differences, advantages, and disadvantages to help you have a better understanding for each battery type and learn when to use or how to care for them. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe to learn something new every week. Let's get started. We'll start with the voltage differences among the battery types. As some of you already know, all battery powered applications often require a set of voltage ranges. Their battery needs to be able to fulfill that requirement, otherwise the application won't run properly or might even get damaged. You can usually find the voltage requirement label on your application or its battery. Also note that the voltage you see is not its actual voltage but a nominal voltage, which is measured at the midpoint between fully charged and fully discharged. For example, this air pump uses a battery with a nominal voltage of 18 volts. The info is labeled here on the device and on the battery as well. Each battery type will have a different nominal voltage per cell. For example, a NiCad or nickel metal hydride cell has a nominal voltage of 1.2 volts and a lithium ion cell has a nominal voltage of 3.6 volts. Knowing this will help you determine how many battery cells your application requires. Again, I'll be using this air pump battery as an example. It's an 18 volt 4 amp hour lithium iron battery pack. Without taking it apart, we can guess how many battery cells are in here. First, we divide 18 by 3.6, which equals to 5, and judging by the size, there are probably a total of 10 3.6 volt lithium ion 18659 cells with the configuration of 5S2P. Let's say you lost this battery and want to rebuild it with the same voltage and capacity using nickel metal hydride instead of lithium ion. To make it simple without involving wiring the batteries in Palo, I use the Centura C size, which has the same capacity of 4 amp hours to build it. The total number of cells I need will be 18 volts divided by 1.2 volts, which will give me 15 cells. After wiring them in series, you'll have the battery with the same power as the original one. However, as you can see, there is a huge difference in sizes between these two battery packs. This brings us to our next point, the form factor. The form of the batteries will mostly depend on the application's battery compartment and each battery type has a different form. For example, sealed lead acid batteries is normally built in a rectangular shaped box. And because lithium iron phosphate batteries are commonly used to replace sealed lead acid batteries, you will often see that they are assembled in a rectangular shape. NiCad and nickel metal hydride cell shape is cylindrical. LiPo cells have a flat rectangular shape and lithium ion cells are widely used with cylindrical and flat rectangular shape. The two major commonly used cell size for lithium ion are 18650s and 21700s, which has a different height and diameter. Knowing this will give you an idea of which battery you want to buy or how to build your own battery pack that will fit your device's battery compartment. After learning the form of each battery type, we'll need to take their energy density differences into consideration. Energy density is the amount of energy a battery contains compared to its weight or size. Higher energy density means that the battery has a longer runtime with a smaller size. This is helpful when buying or building a custom battery pack, where you don't have a lot of room for the battery, but need a lot of power. Some example devices are smartphones, laptops, tablets, and drones. Each battery type has a different energy density. Among the six types we mentioned earlier, lithium iron batteries have the highest energy density. After that, we have lithium iron phosphate, lithium polymer, nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium, and then last but not least is still that acid battery which has the lowest energy density. I'll use these two batteries as an example about energy density. The one on the left is the Sealed Acid Battery, 6 volt with a capacity of 1.2 amp hour, so it has 7.2 watt hours. The one on the right is a lithium iron battery with 12.6 watt hours. This one has a higher energy density because it's double the power output, but the size is only one fourth of the Sealed Acid Batteries. By the way, if you don't know what volt or amp hour or how to calculate a watt hour, you can check out this video, which is a deeper dive and explains what each measurement is and how they relate to each other. Okay, so back to the topic. So far, we've learned that lithium iron has the highest energy density. So does it mean we should all use lithium iron batteries? The answer is no. While they're powerful and compact, they also cost more and require higher protection. So depending on your project and budget, you might find that other battery types are more suitable. Next is a charge and discharge current. It is often expressed as C rating, which will let you know how fast the battery can be charged and discharged, and whether it's powerful enough for your devices. You can often find it on the battery's label or the datasheet. If you want to know more about C rating, you can check out this video here. 
Different battery types will have different charge and discharge current. It's best to check with the manufacturer for more accurate information. In general, for charge current, we recommend charging at a lower rate than 1C for lithium-based batteries, between 0.2C to 0.5C for nickel-based batteries, and less than 0.2C for steel lead acid batteries. Applying a higher charging current than the recommended can damage the batteries permanently. For discharge current, steel lead acid batteries generally have a low discharge rate of 0.2C, while lithium polymer batteries have a higher discharge rate of 10C or 20C. Some applications that usually require high C ratings are drones, power tools, RC cars, and robotics. When choosing your battery pack, get a pack with a discharge rating of at least double the maximum current your application can pull out, or get the largest C rating that you can buy. This will help your battery run cooler and have a longer lifespan compared to lower C ratings, regardless of the battery type. The next point is operating temperature. Batteries work best at room temperature but it's not always the case when you have it used outdoors or in extreme cold or hot weather. If you have a project that requires a special working temperature range, like discharging lithium ion battery pack at negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, feel free to contact our customer service for a project review so we can find a solution that works for it. We also can formulate a special battery cell to work better in extreme temperatures. The next difference is their life cycle. Life cycle is the number of charge and discharge cycles that a battery can complete before losing its performance. This will indicate the battery's longevity. Here is a table roughly showing the estimated life cycle of each battery types. As you can see, lithium iron phosphate batteries have the highest life cycle, which is often used in power tools or energy storage like portable power stations. Steel lead acid batteries have the lowest cycle life of around 200 to 300 cycles. So if you're looking for a reliable battery that can last for a long time, then lithium iron phosphate would be a better choice. Please also note that the life cycle can decrease or increase depending largely on the use and care of and conditions. Constantly leaving the battery overcharged or over discharge or using it in extreme hot or cold temperatures are some examples that shorten the battery's life cycle. Each battery type also has a different depth of discharge. The depth of discharge is the amount of energy that can be discharged from a fully charged battery and normally expressed as percentage. The higher depth of discharge means the more power can be drawn from the battery within a single cycle. And if the battery are being discharged beyond its maximum depth of discharge, it will affect the battery's performance and reduce its lifespan. Each manufacturer has different recommendations on the maximum depth of discharge, so it's best to check with them for the exact information. But in general, you need to watch out for silicate acid batteries since its depth of discharge is usually around 50%. That means you should use up to 50% of its capacity, then recharge it back to full to maximize its performance. The last difference in each battery type is their self-discharge rate. It's the amount of energy that is lost over time during storage. It's not a big concern when it comes to choosing your battery, but it's related to the frequency of maintenance. For example, the higher the battery's self-discharge rate, the more you'll need to recharge it to avoid over-discharging it during storage. Among the six types, steel lead acid batteries have the highest self-discharge rate of about 10-20% to per month. In addition, it shouldn't be discharged over 50%, so we'll need to recharge it every 4-5 to five months. Lithium-based batteries have a self-discharge rate of around 1.5 to 5%. Some nickel metal hydride batteries have a really high self-discharge rate of 10 to 15% per month. But with newer technologies, you can now find self-discharging nickel metal hydride batteries that only lose around 15% of its capacity per year. Some examples of that are our Centura and Premier Pro batteries. That's it for today's video. We hope you now have a better understanding for battery types. If you have any comments or video suggestions, please leave them down below. Thank you, and we'll see you next week.